Hey, how's it going? Question here from our friend Kamal. Uh, Kamal says, hey, my name's Kamal. I would like to ask you regarding the video you made for Applying to Unity. First of all, I'm bad at coding. Uh, I'm trying to make a text-based interactive story. I managed to make the code work thanks to your explanation, but I have a problem making a save system. I don't know how to use your work. I don't know how to use your code to make it work. It'd be great if you could make a video on creating a save system if it's not too much trouble for you. Otherwise, it would be very helpful if you could point me in the right direction at least. I hope you can help me. Uh, yeah, no problem, Kamal. Um, I'm happy to help you out uh, because it's something I've actually done. Uh, I, the dialogue system I wrote, Twine to Unity, is something I used in this game called Do Animal Stream, which is uh, releasing very soon on Steam. And uh, yeah, as you can see, these are all my conversations. I mean, there's a ton in this game. You know, this is just the Twine export that you probably know from the tutorial. And uh, I could I could totally go over how we save data for the conversation. I mean, there's a lot of different data to save, and how you're going to save player data, there's always a lot of options, but... Um, a, lot, a lot of ways that you could approach it. But I wanted to show you something here first. And that was... When I talked to one of these guys... Uh, the options are, by default, sort of like white. But then if I choose one, like in this case, I said, I just want to cry. And then I talk to them again. It's kind of grayed out. So I sort of remembered if you've already chosen that option. Okay. And actually, if I've already chosen that option, then I default you to choosing the second option. If you're on a controller, like the Xbox, uh, Xbox controller. Or that's the first one that'll show up as yellow, which means highlighted. Uh, so how do I do that? Um, the answer is I actually use player prefs for a lot of this. Now, player prefs is sort of Unity's default system for saving data. But uh, I've also rolled my own in some cases, and we'll talk about multiple approaches. Uh, we're not going to talk about putting data online, but if you do need to save data to the cloud for a player uh, user, I would highly recommend uh, PlayFab, which has a really good user tracking software. And uh, it supports integrations for Google Play and also Facebook. So I really love PlayFab. I think they're great. Um, it's spelled like this. PlayFab. They have good leaderboards too. All right. So here's how you do it. Um, basically, I'm about to show the responses. Okay. And I grab a unique key for each one of those responses. So to get that key, I have a method. It's called the has chosen response key. Let's go in there. So I take the title of the current node and I take the destination of the response. So basically, if we are on the hello, well, here, I've got an example probably. So in this case, if you're on the node titled satellite two and the response will bring you to satellite three, this is a unique identifier for my game because we, we never have two responses that send you to the same place. Uh, then we're going to just save that key as satellite2 dash satellite3. So that would be the answer. But you might want to do something that maybe takes the text that they're saying, or maybe the first um, 10 characters or something. I don't know. It depends on your game, right? But that's how we create our little key. And as you can see, that algorithm is, is uh, could easily be changed. It's all just right here in this method. And this is referenced... Um, okay, so it's here. When the user chooses a response, we take the index that they chose and we save that key as an integer where that is the key and the value is 1. Okay? And then when we are showing responses, we look for that key where, the, where that is the key and the default value is 0. So if the default value has been changed, it's now one. Well, then I know that they have already chosen that response option. And so we can continue. So that is essentially how I do it. And you could also use this process to, uh, in, in the case of no stranger, I did something similar to this where I was able to catch up the player. So if they had, you know, talked to somebody for a while and then they wanted to jump into the app again, it could zoom through the beginning of the conversation because it knew all of the responses that had previously been chosen. Um, however, uh, it doesn't just end there. I also have 
actual uh, save data. Now this is kind of funny because often you'll save things on a file local to the computer. Um, but in this case, I actually just have my save data as one big string, which I then save to player prep uh, under the key save data. So you could do that too. You could serialize all of your save data and then you could just save it out into the player preps, or you could write it to a file, whatever you prefer. Um, player preps is great. Just do be mindful that uh, uh, players can look at that information. So if you're saving like their progress or something and it's not encrypted in any way, players could very easily go in there and, and edit the values if they wanted to. At least I understand it's, uh, it's not too difficult to do that. So just be mindful of that. You may want to run some sort of encryption on top of that. Um, so here's how I do it. I have a game object called uh, game progress, and I read the string that was saved, and then I parse it into the game progress class using a JSON utility. So it is converted into JSON and it's not encrypted in any way. So game progress is here. You have to flag it as serializable. But basically, whatever you want to save, you just put here. So for me, I am saving what objects have been turned on and off, which is a custom data type called a toggleable data. Probably not relevant for your game, but for my game, we're turning things on and off all the time. So a toggleable data is basically just the name of the object and whether or not we turned it on or off. Uh, that's relative to whatever the default is in the scene. So that's a toggle data. I have a list of all the toggle datas for anything you've toggled. And then I have the player's position and then the position of a certain character named Abe, who's sort of an important character in the story. So what you do is you serialize this game progress. You know, you might be changing this over time. So I have a, um, so, game, so progress is here. And I imagine this is referenced somewhere else in the, uh, Oh, okay. Actually, it's it's not referenced at all during runtime. Um, so basically, we just save the game, and it creates a little game progress by polling, you know, different systems, and then it saves that out. So this game progress really only lives within the persistent data class. Uh, that's not always the case. In in other programs I've written, you might pull the progress out and have that directly referenceable by you know some controller. But in this case. We just initialize everything that needs to be initialized with the save data when we load it. And then uh, we only create a, a game progress when we need to. So your save game function might look something like this. You might start uh, by obtaining the data you want to save. So in this case, I create a variable called the player position. And I go to the player controller and I get its position. And then I save out anything that's not going to be in the game progress directly to player prefs, where it will later be read. So for example, the inventory, this is basically what items has the character picked up. I just save that directly to uh, the player prefs as a, uh, as, a sh as a string, which I later parse out. I wonder what this is. This is a, uh, it's just a list of strings, which I serialize. So I just serialize the list using the persistent data serialize function is that right oh okay interesting so i have a i have an xml serialization method here just uh just a basic serialization method and what this does is basically given any object in you can convert it to a string and uh, i'm pretty sure json does the same thing uh, xml is just another way to serialize something so uh where were we i'm in the save game data i've obtained the player position then I save that player position along with any other relevant save data into a custom class, which is called the game progress. And then simple enough, I just convert that to JSON using JSON utility dot to JSON. So this converts that custom class with all that important information into a string, which I then save to player prefs using player prefs dot set string. Okay, simple enough. And then later on in the load game, I just uh, do json.utility from json on the save data string, which converts it back into a game progress class. So we see that over here from json, which brings it into the game progress class. And then I 
rehydrate these variables. I fill them in using progress dot, you know, whatever fields I had saved to. So it's pretty straightforward there. Um, sometimes the player wants to reset their progress for a given game. And I don't want to actually delete all of their save data because I do save important stuff. So the way that I do that is this method. I say reset all but persistent data. There's some data that needs to persist. And uh, this is a little bit sloppy, but I basically assign every single piece of persistent data into a local variable. So in this case, I want to keep their uh, display language. So if they're playing the game in English, I don't want them to start a new round and it to start in Chinese. So I save their display language as an integer called lang. Then I do player prefs dot delete all data, which will completely wipe the save. And then I rehydrate all of the variables I care about. So I take that local variable called lang and I set it back. <laughs> I set the display data back. So uh, I find this a lot easier to basically just uh, manually persist some pieces of the data and then everything else just goes into the delete all function. So uh, simple enough, basically. So there's just a lot of random stuff I remember, such as, um, oh, the player's mouse sensitivity, and I don't want them to have to set that again, even if they want to start a new game, so to speak. And so when the player starts a new game, I just push reset all uh, but persistent data, and, uh, and that's how it goes. So that's how I manage save data in Do Animals Dream, and uh, let me know if this helped you. Good luck.